Towards the end of the 90s, Scooby-Doo made a flashy return with Zombie Island. It really solidified what I think many people love about Scooby-Doo. It's basically Looney Tunes comedy with nice characters and a horror aesthetic. I finally pronounced both syllables, horror. You can stop now. This renewed life in the brand led to the development of the live action movie, and on its back came the first new Scooby TV series in nearly 15 years. What's new, Scooby-Doo? What's New Scooby-Doo is Scooby-Doo's back to basic show. Between new character additions, the regular inclusion of supernatural elements, stupid fucking idiot red herring who's a god mother fucking idiot, and a darker tone, the Scooby-Doo that many people were initially familiar with hadn't been around for quite a while. What's New Scooby-Doo took the classic formula everyone knows and loves or knows and is bored of and put it in the 21st century. Small outfit changes, upgrades in technology, and a pop goes punk soundtrack brought Scooby-Doo into to the world of Tony Hawk Pro Skater. What's new Scooby-Doo was my Scooby-Doo. It's the first time I ever remembering waking up to see new Scooby-Doo episodes. And it proved after 30 years, the traditional Scooby-Doo formula still worked. Even if it was a little tired. I'm really tired. But you know, the wheel has worked for thousands and thousands of years. Scooby-Doo can too. Fire. The Wheel, Scooby-Doo, man's greatest assets. So in the last part of this year's Scooby-Thon, I'm going to take a look at Warner Brothers' version of new Super Mario Brothers. And, uh, <laughs> jeepers, uh, I'm from Florida, so I really don't know how to tie a scarf. I really hope I did it well. Before we continue, today's video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Using the internet without a VPN in 2019 is not a very smart move. In fact, it's a very silly move, and you wouldn't want to be perceived as silly, would you? Fortunately, Surfshark VPN is an affordable and easy to use VPN that can help prevent you from making your next silly mistake. With the holiday season coming up, a lot of people, including me, are planning on traveling. And traveling means relying on one of the most dangerous things in the world public Wi-Fi. But Surfshark can help keep you safe by encrypting your IP address and your data, which could protect you from malware, trackers, and phishing attempts that many dumb, yet very dangerous nerds may want to throw at you. So take that, nerds. And unlike many of the competitors, Surfshark VPN does not have a limit to how many devices you can protect at once. On a lighter note, VPNs also allow you to connect to international servers. So if you're traveling abroad and you want access to the US Netflix library, you have it. Or if you're at home and you're curious as to what region-specific content exists elsewhere, you can look. For a limited time, if you sign up for Surfshark VPN using my link in the description, you can get 83% off and three months free with your Surfshark VPN subscription plan. So go to surfshark.deals billium or click the link in the description to sign up today. What's new Scooby-Doo is everything you'd expect from Scooby-Doo. The gang goes from town to town and country to country running into people who have been terrorized by some monster. Using their skills, they catch the bad guy and solve the mystery. Same old, same old. It's not an interesting take on Scooby-Doo, it's just Scooby-Doo, and it's interested in presenting itself exactly how you remember it. It's very reliant on the old character gimmicks, there's montages, and anything new added is very shallow and pretty uninteresting. This doesn't make it bad or anything, it just means that it's the same old, same old. Scooby-Doo is still entertaining. It's just very vanilla. And sometimes, you know, sometimes vanilla's good. Especially after a long day at work and... Yeah. Bringing Scooby-Doo into the 21st century also meant a new look for the characters. Hmm, would anyone really wear something this hideous? This really is a mystery. Fred's ascot is gone, Daphne is looking a little different, Velma is largely unchanged, and Shaggy's new sandals is making me come to terms with the fact that he probably smells really, really bad. I love it when they update the character designs. There's a time and place for the originals, but I don't mind when they do new things. There's so many iterations of Scooby-Doo to care about how any one of them changed it up. However, I hate Fred's outfit. There's too many blue stripes. It really needs the orange to break it up. But aside from the small aesthetic changes, the show is largely what you'd expect. However, it does lean into the character's social standings a bit more to create new jokes. Fred is now full dumb jock. He has trouble pronouncing foreign words, just like me, and he's always going around bragging how much he bench presses. It's 220. I should warn you, I, I can bench press 220. I'm a fan of Fred. 
Daphne's fashion sense now makes her super crafty like a MacGyver. Velma is now an inventor and Scooby and Shaggy are largely unchanged aside from the fact that Shaggy is now a vegetarian at the request of his original voice actor, radio host Casey Kasim, who now returns to the character. I really like this take on the characters. While they're not necessarily interesting or creative in a narrative sense, I really enjoy their dynamic. It does a really good job of updating the characters in an unrisky, non-controversial way. They're portrayed as friends in a really nice way. They live together, they reminisce, and many episodes start with them on vacation before they discover the mystery. Meaning they're just hanging out and on vacation together. They don't just share this weird hobby in common, they're friends, and I love it. It's the characters as you may remember them, but not necessarily how they were. I mean, Fred and Daphne are actually fun and entertaining, so that's a plus. While Scooby-Doo is clearly a property meant for kids, I feel like what's new is the first time it's been marketed to appeal to a much younger audience. I mean, with shows like this, a huge driving factor is toy sales. And historically, many shows that have had a heavier reliance on plot or a darker tone have not done well. Furthermore, DVD sales are a huge aspect to Scooby-Doo, and it's much easier to sell a bunch of random episodes on a disc rather than individual volumes. While the basic elements of Scooby-Doo are the same, the biggest change is the lack of the horror aesthetic. What's New Scooby-Doo is bright and colorful. It's way too saturated, just like many early digitally colored Warner Brothers shows were. Even when the setting is lit darkly, the characters are bright. It's literally the opposite of old Scooby-Doo, which is always dark, even in the middle of the day. Also, I hate the hue they use for the character's skin. It's this weird yellowish or greenish quality. I, I, I can't stop fixating on it. It's not present with all the characters either, pretty much just the main cast. I never realized how much Scooby-Doo's appeal is reliant on its aesthetic. It's what balances the show and makes it something cool, aside from the bright aesthetic. The show also leans into the logic of a cartoon world a little too much. I mean, Scooby-Doo is a talking dog. I'm certainly not sitting here judging and nitpicking small lapses in the show's internal logic, but rather the show's holistic logic. This is really hard to describe. I feel like humor based on a cartoon's logic works when it's juxtaposed to something that more closely resembles our world's logic. You have to lean into the absurdity for a joke to work because you're pointing out how absurd it is. What's New Scooby-Doo has a pretty realistic art style in terms of the character's proportions, but the world almost operates on logic that is from a child's perspective. Once again, this is really hard to describe. I know how I feel about it, but finding the words for it is just, it's hard. Well, I think you're doing a great job right now, Billy. Thank you, Dr. Nico. I mean, Scooby has always been a talking dog, but his movements here are a lot more human. It's really uncanny. Like when he reaches his arms out to grab something, it's weird and I don't like it. There's an episode where Velma enters a science fair and wins based on a tech toy she designed. As a young kid, electronics are kind of what your view of science is. So of course, building an electronic toy would be considered science. This stuff doesn't really make the show bad. It just makes me feel like I'm too old to be watching it, which I totally am, but I didn't necessarily feel that way about the last three Scooby-Doo videos I made. This is an issue exclusive to what's new Scooby-Doo. The monsters are really out there. Giant mechanical robots, swarms of creatures, and kaiju-sized creatures. And of course, the explanation for how this is all just someone in a monster suit is never satisfying. It's just, well, yeah. I love going all out with the monsters, but unlike Mystery Incorporated, they don't lean into the absurdity. They just expect you to accept it at face value, never questioning it. But questioning it and pointing it out how unrealistic and absurd it is, is what makes the humor work. Instead of making me laugh, it just makes me roll my eyes because I don't understand how a giant kaiju sized shaggy is possible. Like what? What's New also updates the Hanna-Barbera style in digital very well. I mean, it looks cheap. There's animation errors, the movement is really choppy, and off-model characters are very common. However, the original Scooby-Doo is more appealing because it's animated with an older craft that isn't really seen much anymore. It reveals an interesting creative process, even if the techniques were compared to a factory assembly line at the time. What's New just looks like cheap digital animation. I think the biggest plus to What's New Scooby-Doo are the music montages. Just like how the 70s montages are now a time capsule of the kind of music 
music that was popular then, What's New Scooby-Doo is a time capsule for early 2000s pop punk. Literally everyone is here. Simple Plan, Smash Mouth, Less Than Jake, and a few all have my Digimon movie bingo card filled out. They have fun with the music too. It's not just playing tracks, but occasionally they get guest stars in the episodes just like the old days. You have the episode Simple Plan and the Invisible Man, Smash Mouth shows up for a cameo, and the Hex Girls are back! I li like Thorn. I liked her better than the witch's ghost. It's fun and silly and I enjoy it. The most loved inclusion, of course, is the theme song by Simple Plan. It's quite the bop. What's Newbert Scoobert Doobert? We're coming after you, Bert. Just a side note, I read the lyrics without the music and I never realized how vaguely threatening it is. What's new, Scooby-Doo? We're coming after you. We're gonna solve that mystery. I see you, Scooby-Doo. The trail leads back to you. The show is definitely not bad. It's just not my favorite Scooby-Doo show for a plethora of reasons, but there are some really good episodes. All three holiday episodes are really fun, especially the Christmas one. The baseball zombie episode has a really fun twist at the end. There's an origin story episode for the mystery machine. And my personal favorite, the mini golf episode, where you find out Shaggy is a national champion mini golfer. It's great. Of course, What's New Scooby-Doo also brought with it a whole barrage of new straight-to-video movies. After Cyber Chase, the art style for all of Scooby-Doo's movies were based on What's New Scooby-Doo. And originally, I was going to save these for another year, but they're so similar to What's New Scooby-Doo, I don't know what I'd say about them that I didn't say in this video. Maybe I'll revisit them more at some point in order to give deeper thoughts on them, but for the most part, they're the same style stuff you get in the show with a slightly better budget. I know many of you probably hold these movies close to your heart and that's great. I love that. I didn't really grow up with many of these. I saw them a few times, maybe, but I'm not as intimately familiar as many of you are, maybe. If you owned this as a kid on VHS or DVD, odds are you watched it dozens of times and it's not very realistic for me to gain that kind of intimacy with the movies. I don't think intimacy was the right word for that. Maybe familiarity, familiar air, familiarity, familiar. Ugh. However, if you want to revisit them, I strongly recommend seeing the first three. Scooby-Doo and the Legend of the Vampire and The Monster of Mexico are both throwback movies, reuniting the whole original cast sans Don Masick. It also remixes a lot of the old music tracks for Max nostalgia's sake. Scooby-Doo and the Loch Ness Monster, on the other hand, has really, really good production value. It shows these character models can work really well with better animation and, oh my god, environmental lighting. It's actually a pretty nice looking movie, and although it doesn't quite reach the level of the earlier films, it's a nice watch. What's New Scooby-Doo is not necessarily a bad show. Most of the episodes are at least enjoyable and the absurdity of some of the jokes are sometimes really funny, but I would not recommend you to watch the whole series like I did. It's Scooby-Doo exactly how you remember it. All of your favorite jokes are there, but also it's still the same tired formula. But you know what? That's not necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes, you want vanilla ice cream. It's comforting to eat vanilla ice cream, but you can't just eat vanilla all the time. Sometimes you want to change it up. And for how Scooby-Doo can change it up, well, we're gonna have to wait to find out how until next year. <laughs> So anyways, thank you for watching this video. If this is your first video of mine, be sure to comment, subscribe, check out my other Scooby-Doo videos. Uh, follow me on social media. The links are in the description down below. Other than that, I have a busy couple weeks coming up. I'm gonna get back on as soon as I can and uh, I'll see you next time.